So I have to ask a question. Do you guys dream? Do you see dreams? Yes. Some people see dreams. Some people don't see dreams. Some people don't remember them. Have you ever awoken up one time and just said, wow, was that an unbelievable dream? I know I had one of those. Um, every once in a while that happens. So, you know, some dreams are low key and some dreams are just vivid, dramatic, just extremely movie-like experiences. They may involve us. They may involve other people uh, in sometimes likely or very unlikely scenarios. Uh, as you're thinking about your dreams, uh, some of them are very lifelike and some of them are nothing like life. You wake up and you say, what was that? So this week's passage, Vayeshev, uh, we read the story of Joseph, Jacob, Jacob's youngest son this time, and he's foolishly telling his dreams to his brothers. Um, it's a little bit of a heart-wrenching story because Torah tells us that the disposition that Joseph's brothers had towards him was extremely negative. I mean, extremely negative. In Genesis 37, verse 4, we read, Vaisneu oto, literally, and they hated him. Velo yachlu davro le shalom, and they could not speak shalom. They could not speak well to him. Now, that's some family. Think about that. They were so annoyed, so perturbed to such a degree by their brother that they could not even say anything nice to him. Some people would say they would not even greet him. They would not say shalom to him. So that's a, a very disturbing family dynamic. Now, the older brothers did not like Joseph. They had a reason. And their reason was very simple. He was the father's favorite. He got special treatment, preferential treatment. He was privileged. Yet uh, he still told them his dreams. Perhaps foolishly. This is how we know he was young and inexperienced. He told him his dreams, and his dreams were, you know, self incriminating. Let's put him that way. So he told him the dreams, regardless. I'm sure he had an idea what they're about. If you read the story, remember the brothers had no problem understanding what those dreams were about. The moment he told them the dreams, they immediately interpreted them. So I think the dream interpretation runs in a family there. So they understood exactly what's going on. They said, we, we're going to bow down to you? No, this is not going to happen. As he tells them the dreams, he, of course, ends up in a pit. This is a story we just read. They concoct this plan. They're going to kill him. Well, they decided to throw him in a pit, which, of course, was followed by slavery and then even prison. I'm sure he didn't see that one uh, as he was telling them his dreams. Now, what happened may not be solely because Joseph just shared his dreams with his brothers. We know that this event has occurred uh, for reasons, and it certainly didn't help that he decided to share these words. But what happened is these stories he told, the dreams he shared, they aggravated their relationship, and the animosity between the siblings just grew completely out of control. And that's why we read this disturbing story about brothers really exacting violence on, on their brother. So... Joseph's dreams now, let's think about them for a second. They were not some flights of fancy. Just, just consider this for a moment. They were not really his imagination. A lot of times when I talk about dreams, this is just what we dream up, right? But for him, in fact, they were not his dreams at all. They did not originate from him, and they were not made up by him. They were visions. They were not imaginations. Uh, they were visions from Hashem himself, the messages of future, what is going to happen. Now, I'm sure he did not see that, and young Joseph just, what he thought maybe was typical dreams, but they were actually spiritual visions. That's what they were. These were God's words in a dream form. That's what it was, like prophecy, perhaps. So every time the topic of dream com dreams comes up, I have to make a little disclaimer uh, because I have people come to me all the time asking me about the meanings of their dreams and things like that. So I have to make a disclaimer that most of the wild and whimsical dreams that we have are not likely visions of the future or prophecies or anything like that. Most of them are probably not word from God. It's just 
most of the time, they're just dreams. They're playground of our imagination, uh, our feelings, uh, the work of our subconscious minds, whatever you want to call them. I can't explain dreams. I'm not a specialist on them. But most of the time, that's what they are. Now, Hashem can speak to us through a dream. I don't ever exclude that. I think sometimes He does. Uh, but that is not something that ordinarily happens. If that happens, it's something really outstanding and something really extraordinary. So most of the time when we see dreams, it's just dreams. I think Hashem has more uh, objective ways to reach to us today. In fact, He has been revealing Himself. He has been revealing His will to us through His servant, servants for thousands and thousands of years. He has been speaking to us. So, and we have these records, we have these teachings, we have these words, we read them, we recite them. And I think most often Hashem speaks to those words to us today, if we listen. So it's not like He can't use dreams, but a lot of times we have more concrete and more objective means at our disposal. So how does this ancient story that we just read in the Torah applies to us today, to our modern lives. And the message, uh, as I consider, that spoke the loudest to me this year, as I read this story, is very simple. That we should avoid being like Joseph's brothers. Sometimes I think that's what we need to hear. Sometimes we're quick to dismiss. Just like they were quick to dismiss what Joseph saw, uh, we should be patient. Uh, we should not uh, just come off the rails. We should not get upset. If somebody says something we don't like, we need that. Uh, and if in the situation of Joseph, we should also be patient because even if people ignore us um, or terrible things befall us, it doesn't mean that what God has shown us is not true. So maybe some of you listening uh, to me right now, thinking about this story, feel a little bit like Joseph. Maybe we have some dreamers here. Maybe something Hashem has shown to you that other people are not able to see. You may have even shared your dream, um, your revelation, your bright business idea, the scarf you needed, the poem you wrote, the song you composed, the dish you invented, fill in your blank. You may have just shared that with other people. Usually it's people close to you, relatives, friends, and... Uh, and just, just maybe, you received a very similar reaction. Your message was not appreciated. Whatever it is that you shared, people didn't take, think much of it. So, what you saw is an amazing thing. It was not well received. And maybe that's why some of us feel like Joseph sometimes. Um, maybe whatever we offer to other people that we think is wonderful is just shut down and played down or dismissed completely. That happens. Now, some of you may empathize with Joseph because of this, because maybe you were in his shoes, maybe just recently. Uh, to you, I say, don't give up your dreams, uh, whatever shape they take. In him, it was an actual dream. With you, maybe it's something else, but don't give it up. The message to you is be encouraged by Joseph's story in the Torah and persevere. He stuck to it. He never forgot those dreams, and those dreams actually did come true. Now, what if what was put into you, if you did receive something from Hashem truly, there's a reason for it. And that blessing may yet be to come. Who knows how long from that time and what you might have to go through before you get to that stage. But hold on to those things, is what I'm saying. But then not all of us are like Joseph. Not all of us are dreamers. Uh, maybe some of us are more like his brothers. Uh, we feel that some people are just more loved. We look around and we say, why do they have the most colorful robes? Uh, why do they have the nicest cars, the cushiest jobs, the best looks? Fill in the blank. We figure this out. The lesson for those of us who feel like Joseph's brothers looking at someone else is stop comparing yourself to others. Hashem loves you. Maybe differently that he loves other people, but that's okay. Do not be quick also to dismiss the ideas and the gifts and dreams and notions that these other people whom you think may be more favored 
might share with you. Don't be quick. Be careful not to throw a wet blanket on the spark that Hashem has lit. Realize that sometimes that's what's happening, but we can't see it. Just as Joseph's family, they could not imagine, possibly in their wildest dreams, as they thought, they could not imagine a scenario that they would bow to their youngest brother. At that moment, they could not see that. But you know, we often cannot see these kinds of things coming. But it did happen many, many years in the future. So don't be quick to dismiss these things. If you have little esteem for someone, maybe someone you look at and you say, well, what do they have to say? Do not shut down their ideas automatically. Not so quickly. Sometimes great things come from most unlikely people, from most unlikely sources, from most unlikely places, and from completely unexpected circumstances. Let's allow Joseph's to have their dreams. Let's let them have it. And let's be on the lookout to see how we ourselves fit into it. Because we don't want to feel superior to them or feel that somehow they're better and allow that bias to force us in a way to dismiss what they have to say. As I was thinking of the story that we have just read uh, about things coming in a very, very unexpected way. Who could have expected that an angel would come to a young woman in Israel and say, you will be the mother of Mashiach. And then Joseph, his wife is pregnant. What is he supposed to think? Maybe he's not like Joseph the dreamer. He's a realist. He looks at the situation and he says, this is not kosher. What do I have to do? How, how do I deal with this? So this is just one example how sometimes things work out in the most unpredictable ways. And sometimes there are many circumstances that we cannot explain or can't even possibly foresee. Yet something amazing, a wonderful blessing can come to all of us because of these unlikely and very unusual circumstances. So let's be kinder to Joseph's among us.